So you want to map your own Subaru? No problem. Hello and welcome back, or welcome here for the first time if it's your first time watching one of my videos. Today I'm going to go through the first steps on how to self-tune your Subaru. That first step being data logging. It's not as sexy a subject as adding pops and bangs, for example, but it is the cornerstone for all kinds of tuning that you would want to do or fault finding going forward. So hopefully you'll find this of interest or useful. There's many people around the world that tune their own cars. It's not just out of choice. Sometimes if you're in a country where there isn't a local good tuner or even a bad one, there is no alternative apart from doing it yourself, particularly if you've got a modified car and Subarus are a very easily modified car and need mapping for almost all modifications. Mapping your own car isn't a problem. I don't find it threatening or uh, an issue for me personally. It's how I started after all, many, many years ago. So what I'm wanting to do with these videos is try and share some of that experience with you, share some of that knowledge, give a little bit back so that you know where and what and how to data log. And then eventually through more of these videos, you'll learn how to map your own vehicles. Data logging is the process of recording some of the engine data, some of the speed data, sensor data, basically anything that's going on within the ECU so that you can see what the engine needs, what you want it to do and to fault find as well. To start data logging, all you really need is a OBD adapter that will plug into the OBD port under the steering wheel of your car. You could start with a Bluetooth one, um, but I'm using a Tatrix open port 2 cable for the purposes of this video. The advantage of the Tatrix 2 cable is that you can use software like um, either ROM Raider, um, ECU Edit, but it's really useful to, to invest a bit in that lead. There are cheap copies available, but from my experience with those, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And it's always best to avoid buying twice. Um, so try and buy the genuine item. So if I open up the ECU edit software and come on to the data login button at the top here, if I just click on that, it will connect to the vehicle um, I've got my Tatrix 2 cable plugged into the OBD port and also into the computer. And these are some of the fields that I am data logging. If I show you the complete list, so this is everything that is possible to data log from this ECU. This list varies depending on the vehicle that you've got the, the um, interface plugged into. But I've chosen these ones to go through and to monitor. So to go down the list, first on the list there is advanced multiplier. That's essentially an engine happiness scale. So on this 32-bit ECU in my Forester STI, that goes from zero to one. At one, it adds all the ignition advance that is possible to add. At zero, it's not adding that at all and in fact it's putting it into limp mode so if that's showing at one good chance the car's pretty happy with what's going on um, i'm also monitoring the airflow sensor voltage uh, they're a common thing for going wrong so it's useful to monitor what's going on here also monitoring the air fuel correction and the air fuel learning so correction is a short-term trim on the air fuel ratio and the learning is a long-term trim so what it's learnt to add over a period of time also the air fuel sensor um, the sensor in the vehicle is a narrow band so it is not anywhere near as accurate as a wide band so if you're going to be tuning the vehicle you have to get a wide band and um, the narrow band sensor will lie to you You could monitor the atmospheric pressure. I'm going to un unselect that because we don't need that for this example. And the battery voltage, again, is useful to monitor. But the more fields that you monitor here, 
the, um, the, the slower the sample rate. In this particular example, if you look at the bottom here, we're down to two and a or 2.3 frames per second. So in every in every second of data logging, it's only got 2.3 times of that data. So it'd be worth removing some of this information to speed up what it's going to be data logging. So if I clear that list down. Right, so moving down the list, coolant temperature, I want to know what the coolant temperature is doing. Either the car's too cold or it's running too hot, so it's useful to spot what is going on there. And then into uh, knock correction. So there are two types of knock correction. You've got feedback knock and fine learning. So feedback is like an instantaneous at that moment. If the ECU is here in detonation, then it takes out some ignition timing to protect itself. The fine learning is what it is learnt to do over a period of time. So if you're seeing values in here, then it's, it's seeing that consistently and it's best to um, trim those figures back within the map itself. Essentially, relying on the ECU to do that for you is, is like relying on a driving instructor using pedals on his side to do the braking for you. It's not good practice. So best practice really is to keep that as zero. Fuel injector pulse width, I'm showing that as a percentage, just to make sure that we're not going over 100% on the injector duty. And the fuel pump duty is a useful thing to monitor as well, because um, on a VVT or an AVCS equipped Subaru, you know, if you're not waiting for the fuel pump duty to drop down at the start, then you're gonna have um, some distorted figures. And I'll explain about that in another video another time. Ignition timing, common sense to monitor that. Um, injector duty cycle, we probably don't need to monitor that. As well as the fuel width percentage. Intake air temperature at the moment, that's showing 59 degrees. It's a really hot, sticky day today. Uh, and I've been parked up for a few minutes, so it's, it's recording pretty high. Um, VVT, if your vehicle is equipped with that. So monitoring the left and the right side VVT. Next item. Next item is the manifold pressure. That's absolute, so um, that includes uh, atmospheric pressure, which is generally around one bar. So as you can see here, the engine switched off, showing one bar of um, absolute pressure. Mass airflow will be a useful thing to monitor as well, because any changes in that, essentially that works out as being um, a good indicator of the power of the vehicle. Also we have primary wastegate duty cycle, so that is the wastegate duty cycle that is being applied to the boost solenoid for the boost control. So higher the duty, you know, the harder it's working to build up boost, lower the duty, the lower it's working. Requested torque, useful for the hatchback vehicles and for the newer vehicles, but um, in this case, I'm going to unselect that. Throttle angle, vehicle speed, makes sense. Um, although if you're going to be going above the speed limit, which I wouldn't recommend, obviously, um, then probably not a good idea to monitor that if you're on public roads because you know ultimately you'd be hanging yourself. And a test mode signal, useful to monitor. And that's it for the data. So they're the fields that I would regularly monitor. So we're getting around two and a half frames a second. It's enough to give us uh, an indication as to what's going on. And if we need to problem solve or take a fine tune into the detail itself, then we can deselect some things 
and go in and select other fields. So, as I said before, uh, there are um, various screens in here. You, know, you could set this up to show big lots of data, but I prefer this screen. So we've got all the, the major things in there, like throttle angle, revs, ignition timing, air fuel correction, air fuel learning, feedback and fine learning, not correction over here, wastegate, manifold pressure, VVT, and some key indicators along the middle here so that I can keep an eye on what's going on at all times. Once you've set up the data for data login, now it's time to go for a drive. Do not be looking at your laptop while you're driving along, unless you're a passenger. Right? It's important to stay safe while you're doing this. If you're trying to fault find, try and recreate the fault that you're seeing while you're driving, while you're data logging, and then deep dive into the data at a later stage. I use this data day in, day out to monitor and tune Subarus on the dyno. Um, but, you know, doing it on the road is absolutely fine. And before you make any changes to the ECU, please totally understand what you're changing. It could very easily damage your engine. So for this video, we're just going to be setting up the data login. Please don't be changing your map yet. Data login is a crucial part of the mapping process, which is why I've started with it within this series. It is the cornerstone, it is the foundations. Until you understand what the data is telling you, do not be changing the map. In the next video in this series, I'll be going through some of the data. We'll probably do that as a live stream. So keep hold of any data logs that, that you create while you're driving. And uh, we'll try and figure a way to um, analyze those live within a group session online and um, see what's going on. Um, but in the meantime, I'm off to data log and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.